Listen now, and I'll tell you a tale of a harrowing happening that will turn your hearts pale. How two sweet children endured a terrible fright. Our story begins on a dark, dreary night. Far too long, they lived under the rule of their foster parents who were vicious and cruel. Their lives were unpredictable, frightful, and rough. And tonight, they agreed. They both had enough. They packed up their things, what little they owned, and set their sights on finding a happier home. They were sure to keep quiet while executing their plot. Tiptoe, sneak out, and try not to get caught. And what do you think you're doing? The mother said with a grin. You little brats are trying to run off again. The girl struggled to get free, but her grip was too strong. And what are we supposed to do when you're gone? The boy watched carefully without making a sound. Those checks are the only reason why we keep you around. All the hard work we've done, all the blood, tears, and sweat. Maybe this will make you remember and you will never forget. Out of the house, they escaped through the dark, into the woods on their journey to embark. For the moment, they felt that their nightmare was done. But little did they know, a new nightmare had just begun. The children now on their own, living out on the street, did what they could to buy something to eat. but they barely had enough to pay for a meal. So if they couldn't buy food, perhaps they could steal. Who wants ice cream? You want ice cream? An ice cream truck filled with delights would just do the trick to undo their plight. Carefully, they crept as not to be seen, and welcomed themselves to the meal of their dreams. Candies, cakes, more than they could believe, and all for the taking. Caught ya, you thieves! What's the deal breaking into my truck? The children were busted, all out of luck. Who do you think you are stealing my food? But the man then saw something that lightened his mood. He saw the hunger in their eyes, and he changed his tone. Where are your parents? Are you two all alone? Boy, oh boy, you two have been through a lot. If you're really that hungry, let's see what I've got. He took pity on them, gave them something to eat, and for the first time in a while, they enjoyed a nice treat. I too remember a time when I was younger. I remember what that feels like, that kind of hunger. And in the man's eyes, they saw a sparkle of glee. Why don't the two of you come home with me? The children agreed to let this man take them in. And so it would seem they now had a friend. They hopped in the truck, and put their supplies in, and headed off to a better horizon. The children sat quietly, neither making a sound, as they made the long journey through the outskirts of town. There was an isolated house at the end of the road. Well, here we are, children. My humble abode. Perched at the peak of the hill, 
all alone, was a house unlike any other they'd known. Inviting and colorful, yet secluded and ominous. We've got the place to ourselves with no one to bother us. Look, I know right now everything seems so scary, but you two can trust me. I'm your new friend, Terry. We've got plenty of food, all the desserts you can eat, everything from pies, cakes, ice cream, and sweets. Up to the house, the kids made their way. It seemed like they finally had a safe place to stay. As the sun started to set, their troubles now in the past. All seemed right with the world, but how long could that last? That evening, the man prepared them a feast, a sugary smorgasbord, to say the least. While the kids sat at the table and made not a peep, until one of them said, Terry gives me the creeps. Are you sure about staying the whole night with this guy? Maybe just for one evening so we can gather supplies. There's all sorts of snacks we can get from this dude. Well, mostly just candy, but still, food's food. Things start to get weird. We can leave in the night. But for now, let's stay here and try being polite. As they plotted, the man returned with something to eat. I hope you both are hungry. <laughs> bon appetit. Oh, it's so nice to have people stop by now and again. I'm usually just here by myself, me and my friend. Oh, that's right. You don't even know about Chuck. Would you like to meet him? Well, you're in luck. Greetings, children. How do you do? Boy, it's sure great to meet both of you. We'll have lots of fun and good times together. Why, we always love having children for dinner. <laughs> Nighttime was upon them and both children were fed. It'd been a long day, so they headed to bed. He gave them both treats and tucked them in tight. Sweet dreams, little darling. Nighty night. But there was much to be done before the children could snooze. They had to search through the house to find things they could use. We need to see what resources we can find. Okay, you pack for your bag and I'll pack for mine. They crept out of their room, not making a sound, and went separate ways to have a look around. They packed for their journey for when they let loose. Any trinket or tool that would be of some use. To the basement below, as the little girl crept, she got an uneasy feeling with each careful step. A feeling down here that just didn't feel right. Like a sinister secret being kept out of sight. Elsewhere, the boy was feeling uneasy, too. There was more going on here than they previously knew. Fiendish items of destruction all about. It was looking quite dangerous, and he'd better watch out. Below, the girl found something she wished she had not. An old book of scribbled notes outlining his plot. Photos of children in dark souvenirs painted a picture that filled her with fears. 
His intentions were clear. There was no question. He was consumed by a cannibal obsession. His victims all slaughtered, all barbecued. He doesn't want them as guests. He wants them as food. They both knew the truth. Nothing was right. They couldn't wait any longer. They're leaving tonight. If we stay here any longer, we're both good as dead. Well, well, well. Look who's out of bed. Little boy, little girl, your scheming is done. And there's no place for miles where you two can run. So you better not cry. And you better not shout. You're in here with us. And you'll never get out. came to, his sister nowhere in sight. The man locked him up and locked him up tight. He tossed and he turned until he finally got free. But he was still trapped, unless he could find a key. He looked all around for anything he could use, then remembered what he'd stowed away in his shoes. With a steady hand and some tricks up his sleeve, he got the lock open and soon he was free. But he found himself in a place quite unknown some subterranean labyrinth under the home. He had to rescue his sister before it was too late, and one wrong turn could get him lost in this place. She had to be down here, of that he was sure. But this was more than a rescue. Now, this was war. The man was making his fiendish preparations, a recipe calling for child mutilations. The poor girl realized that this was her fate, to end up a dish on the man's dinner plate. What a great meal you'll make, so tender and fresh. There's no better taste than that of human flesh. And the eating of a child holds such great power. See, it's not just the flesh. It's your soul I'll devour. This was their moment, the chance to escape. They wasted no time breaking out of the crate. They ran away quickly with no time to spare, trying to find a way out of this lair. Trapped in a nightmare with nowhere to flee and seemingly no end to the horrors they'd seen. They needed a plan, though they hadn't much time. They gathered up just about anything they could find. Knowing that Terry could be lurking about. Carefully, quietly, they tried to find a way out. They looked all around for a direction to go. To the light up above? 
or the darkness below. A harrowing escape, but a glimmer of light. There might be a way out after all. There just might. They were out of the house. It was a new day. But with no place to hide, no place to get away. Terry's treacherous terror was nowhere near done, for he knew the poor children had nowhere to run. sitting alone in the yard. Perhaps she'd given up after running so hard. <laughs> he ran up behind her, prepared to attack. What the hell? Then suddenly, snap! <laughs> he tried to get free, but he had no such luck. The tables had turned. The man knew he was stuck. game was over. The children had won. And now he would pay for the crimes he had done. Despite all his pleading, they doused him with fuel. A fitting end to a man who'd been so vicious and cruel. He had harmed so many, and he would keep doing it, unless something was done to ensure he was through with it. Lucky for them, they knew just the trick. The bottle they found would put an end to him quick. It was the end of the line. That much he could tell. Now let's send this bastard straight back to hell. No! As they watched his flesh smolder, their hearts filled with glee, knowing they'd put an end to his malicious treachery. They gathered their things and set off once more, having no knowledge of what lie in store. They put their troubles behind them and enjoyed a nice treat bringing our story to its end, an end bittersweet. <laughs>